So here's Senator Lindsey Graham's assessment of the radical agenda that Joe Biden's Democratic Party is engaging in. So the bottom line is there's a movement to change America as we know it by the most partisan people in this town, and that's saying a lot, that includes fundamentally changing the makeup of the court, which would set in motion the end of the rule of law as we know it. Because if the Democrats did it and Republicans got, got back in charge, we'd be forced to change the number. The, politi- uh, the court would become a political football, destroying its independence, and the American people would lose faith in the institution. By increasing the number of United States senators making D.C. a state, it's the biggest assault on the Senate Uh, in my lifetime, and comes at the expense of Texas and South Carolina and every other state. A horribly bad idea. H.R. 1 is nationalizing how we vote. It's a federal takeover of our election. And there's an open discussion in the United States Senate, led by the majority leader, about changing the rules of the Senate to make all this a reality. Steny Hoyer, a friend of mine, Uh, says that the filibuster needs to go so this agenda can go through the Senate. I want the American people to know what the filibuster means to you. It's a tool we have as Republicans to make sure that extreme ideas like turning the Supreme Court from 9 to 13 can't happen without Republican buy-in. It's a check and balance on the desire to federalize the elections through H.R. 1. It's the end of making D.C. a state, unless you can get some Republicans to agree, that's a good idea. Not only only is it a bad idea, but there's going to be a huge backlash, and it's beginning. I can sense it. You know, I'm not good at a lot of things in life, but I'm good at knowing the American people. Uh, If you're a longtime listener, you, you, you were with me when I saw Donald Trump coming. And I saw him coming because I know you. I know this audience. I know Americans. Carl Rove wrote a great piece in the Wall Street Journal about how this radicalization of America is absolutely going to backfire and lift Republicans in a big way next year. 2022 is right around the corner. And a perception that has long haunted Democrats that they're anti police and weak on law and order, hurt them in 2020, and make no mistake, they were hurt by it, and is likely to inflict even more damage on their electoral prospects. Look at what what happened with Derek Chauvin and all this police stuff and the conviction of Derek Chauvin and then the police shooting in Columbus. Maxine Waters told protesters that if Derek Chauvin wasn't found guilty, We got to not only stay on the street, we got to fight for justice. We've got to get more confrontational so they know we mean business. And Nancy Pelosi defended that. She said, Maxine Waters doesn't need to apologize. The second ranking House Democrat, Majority Leader Steny Hoyer said, I don't think she meant violence. You think that's going to fly with swing voters?